Welcome to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Will you see your departed loved ones again? What if they go to hell? And where is God in all this? Hello, and welcome to the 922nd edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno, coming to you from WOON, AM, and FM Radio in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, on the Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live, on YouTube, and via TuneIn.com. I'm Ben, and uh, those complex questions came from my co-host, partner in Paranormal Adventures, and dad, Paul. And today, uh, we bring you something we've never done before. And that's uh, saying a lot after almost 14 years on the air, but anyway... We wanted to begin by honoring uh, one of our, our friends who translated just on the 13th of January, Butch Witkowski. Uh, Butch was a police officer turned UFO encrypted investigator. And uh, he had a, uh, it was a show number 580, I believe, from March 30th, 2015. Uh, he had quite the amazing uh, interview with us about using police techniques to in, to investigate UFOs. Uh, so you can go to BehindTheParanormal.com uh, in the archives, and you can uh, enjoy that show uh, free. So uh, we've never done a show based entirely on a Facebook post, but there was such interest in one that I recently posted uh, that we thought a show on it was called for. And uh, I'd like to begin with a quotation from Albert Einstein, maybe to put things in perspective and to get us started. Uh, this was from a letter that Einstein wrote to the widow of a dear, lifelong friend of his on the occasion of his passing in 1955. Quote, Now he has again preceded me a little in parting from this strange world. This has no importance. For people like us who believe in physics, the separation between past, present, and future has only the importance of an admittedly tenacious illusion. Unquote. Einstein himself died a month later. So let's begin with the Facebook post that drew so much interest. Will you see your deceased loved ones again? In 51 years of paranormal research in the trenches, I have never seen a trace of evidence that death, defined as the absence of life, actually exists. What I saw from day one in 1970 and from my first field case was that life always prevails. So apparently does the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Much to my shock, it has always seemed clear that those who die, we say, Ben and I say, translate instead of death, it's an ancient theological term, uh, here continue their super lives, as we call them, all the facets of themselves that make up their complete beings, including their physical bodies, in myriad other parallel worlds, many with different laws of physics. When the brains, B-R-A-N-E-S, or membranes, of these worlds interact in such a way that we perceive them, voila, ghosts and other paranormal phenomena. You will not see your loved ones, quote-unquote, again. You are seeing them right now because you are living those parallel lives right now, too. It's all a matter of multiverse awareness. That's what I really believe. That's the end of the post. Now, comments on that ranged from complete agreement and clapping emojis to bewilderment, uh, people's own different ideas, and a twisting of the concept into the usual cartoonish view modern people have of the quote-unquote afterlife. With our time constraints, we could only address a few of these comments, but keep in mind the motto of this show, everything you know is wrong, and this includes us. We share our beliefs and experiences, but realize our interpretation could be quite wrong, and we're learning along with everybody else, we hope. Uh, Our good friend Tom Dongo, who was uh, renowned in the paranormal field, perhaps says it best. Uh, He's going to be on the show in a few uh, uh, months, anyway, or sooner. Tom says, I have studied this for 40-some-odd years, and I am not convinced about anything, yet. And he adds... Humility is a wise stance, and to admit you don't know is a mark of humility. Bravo, Tom, that's exactly right. So let's uh, begin our discussion. Ben, 
Uh, why don't you start with uh, William in New York City? Sure thing. And uh, William uh, writes, The key to knowledge is hidden in light. Uh, buried by our ancestors and covered up by our current world powers, they have blinded us from the truth and kept us prisoners uh, by fear of unknown dimensions. All right, and he gives a website. Well, I'm not entirely sure uh, what all that means, but William could be on to something there. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, Ben, do you have any comment on William's comment? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think I think the idea of, of hidden knowledge is, is a problematic one, um, because anything that's worth knowing is usually very e- easy to find. I'll, I'll put it that way. Hmm. Um, nothing, nothing's really, I find stuff that's hidden gives it, gives it some sort of air of, um, secrecy, mystique. And a lot of times it's really very simple and anything that seems too complicated tends to push us in the wrong direction. Um, it's kind of like, um, um, do, 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 the 19th century monk Seraphim of Sarov, who makes a really good point that, yeah, you know, a lot of his stuff was super simple, but he he influenced a lot of you know major you know political figures and and cultural figures in Russia in the early 1800s, and he made a point that was you know just if you if you acquire a spirit of peace, you know thousands around you will be saved, and it's it's super simple, it's really very simple. A lot of stuff that he said was really simple, and a lot of stuff that a lot of you know very you know. People who were who were you know pretty pretty good and high standing said pretty simple stuff because it's not complicated you know there's no yeah. hidden knowledge to know because then that takes you down a route of well that means I have to do all these complex rituals to bring the world into order and it just it doesn't work because it's not about our order it's about the order that already exists and orienting ourselves towards it. Well, I think it's a sort of uh, spiritual Occam's razor in a sense as as is known in science the simpler. And the more humble, the better. Right. So let's, uh, we have, there's a, a brief one from Pat Lewis in New Hampshire. Now we use her full name because she's a good friend and she is well known in the paranormal. Yes. So Pat writes, uh, thank you guys. That gives me great comfort. Well, uh, I don't know if I get too comfortable, Pat, because there are a lot of caveats to this, uh, that we're going to get into. So, uh, and also Cliff from Saskatchewan, Canada. Yes, and Cliff writes, uh, I believe we had this discussion once before, Paul. I was going to call one night to talk about this subject. I visited that side uh, three times now in a total of seven minutes on, on the other side, quote-unquote. Uh, I do have memories of uh, of those times, but I I do remember them very, very well, uh, that, this, that this life was gone with no thoughts about my loved ones. Uh, it just wasn't there anymore, but there was someone or something with me every time. No conscious thoughts I could only observe. Okay, now Cliff's comments, I think, can get a discussion started. One point, though, uh, Cliff, if you call in at night, you'll probably get a replay of that day's Coffee and show or an O.N. Oldies show. Okay, so better, better luck with 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, Saskatchewan, uh, where you are <laughs> anyway. Um my Facebook posts range from NASA's latest mind-wrenching photos to baby pictures of Ben and his brother to paranormal news and the latest bird and animal adventures on our property. Now and then I post something provocative just to stimulate discussion, and we usually get it. Uh, this afterlife post was one of those. Uh, if you read between the lines in the post, though, many facets of ourselves in many different universes means Many different sets of loved ones. All right now, <clears throat> now Cliff, I, I um, vaguely recall uh, perhaps a uh, an exchange we had on this. Uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but I think that what we're dealing with here may be uh, a bigger picture than the post, the Facebook post uh, suggested. One of the issues, and maybe Ben could uh, extrapolate on this too, was. Uh, there is there are a number of assumptions. We're always railing against the assumptions uh, that occur in the paranormal. The assumption is that, uh, and I find this rather weird, that once you are born, you are you are you, but you remain you after you die, and you remain you forever. And now, unless you're a Mormon and or, or a group that, that believes 
that the uh, spirits exist before birth and sort of thing, then um, I think that th- this can lead you into the island theory, which we're, another thing we're always complaining about, which is that everything you are, everything we are, is contained within our bodies and within our brains and this sort of thing. And we think that uh, that is a serious mistake because the physics of consciousness indicates very clearly the non-locality. Uh, the, 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 the island theory means everything is local, but uh, the physics and, and uh, even the spirituality indicates that it's, it's not local. We sh- it's shared. Uh, Carl Jung, the great uh, uh, psychologist, uh, psychiatrist too, uh, t- talked about the uh, collective unconscious, that there is a, a pool of knowledge, and we might even say life, that we all are part of. We're not strictly just individuals and islands, and that's it. Ben? Um, yeah, no, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. But I think something important to point out is sort of a, a symbolic thing, which is um, not to say it's not real, but to mean that it's a pattern in which we exist in, which is, you know, we exist in a web of relationships. In that web, you know, everybody we know is is connected to it, right? So it's like just because, you know, somebody moves out of town doesn't mean your your relationship with them ends. I mean, it can, but, you know, nine times out of ten, if it's if it's worthwhile, you stick with it and, you know, you write letters or, or call them, texts, messages, whatever. The world we live in now allows you to stay connected and in that way it's it's similar with you know people translating or or whatever it's it's that you know the relationship doesn't end just because someone's gone from you know this purview of of our our experience it's you know the 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 relationship goes on and it's still going because that's just how the web goes you know it just keeps going going and expanding and how we 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 function within that web doesn't end it just keeps going well i think cliff has a point though uh which dovetails with the whole idea of the multiverse that um we and this is probably the most difficult concept two two very difficult concepts to get the modern mind around is one the simultaneity of all time uh and space everything and this is really based on einstein's uh, special theory of relativity, 1952. Everything is simultaneous. There is no past. There is no future. It's all happening right now. Time is a function of our consciousness. That's what the numbers seem to say. Very weird. But 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 what what meaning would death have? And, such, and, and Einstein himself refers to that in that quote. Uh, past, present, and future. This is from Einstein. Has only the importance of an admittedly tenacious illusion. So uh, Einstein is saying perhaps that uh, what we're saying in a way, and uh, I think we have to pay attention to that. So when you die, when your body dies, quote unquote, and we've often used the uh, the analogy of a tree with a couple of zillion leaves on it, you know, the the leaf falls off and hits the ground, and uh, but but you're not just the leaf; you're the whole tree. We're all pretty much the whole tree. So uh, in that case, Cliff, I think it is certainly correct that, that you can, your awareness, uh, however that works, uh, will, whether shift or translate, as we say, to a consciousness where uh, you have, you don't even remember your loved ones, okay, here. You have others. Now, there is a theory that I've heard that the loved ones you have in all these different worlds are really the same beings connected with you in the same ways through the nexus of consciousness that we all share, through the collective unconscious, if you will. So you really are seeing, but but they may be different forms, you may be on different planets, different times, different species. Uh, anything is possible in the multiverse except death. How can you even have death, even for the body, in, in, in a multiple world scenario where uh, all things, uh, all outcomes uh, take place. So I think that Cliff has a very important point that I did not point out in the uh, in, in the post that uh, there are many, many different ways. Now, now, is this heaven? Is it hell? Well, in our book uh, that Ben and I published in, in uh, 2016 from Schiffer Books, uh, 
behind the paranormal, everything you know is wrong, we go into detail about human beliefs about the afterlife, okay? And uh, it seems that uh, from my conversations with shaman in two different parts of the world that uh, you've got an ancient belief in exactly what we're talking about that somehow was lost and became very complicated and everything else. So um, uh, you might remember your loved ones here. You might not. Why do these things take place? Because I think we make our own beds in the multiverse. I think that, uh, like everything else in nature, it takes the path of least resistance. If you're a selfish jerk here, uh, the path of least resistance would, would be where you already are a selfish jerk somewhere or somewhere else. Uh, the more positivity I think you bring into your life anywhere or any when, uh, the more positive uh, your other facets, as we call them, will be throughout the multiverse. Now, this, again, kind of tough to get your head around, but I think that's how it works. Uh, ben, any comments at this point? Um, I do, uh, but it, it might be worth moving on to the next section for me to okay. address it. Yes. So you can proceed. We have, uh, I guess the name is Inball, and uh, I don't know where she is from. Uh, Imbal writes, uh, we may be multiverse beings, uh, but right now, right here, we are assumed, uh, or we are, we are aware of this particular self. Besides in rare occasions of, of all alternative states, uh, like in dreams, hypnagogia, uh, we are stuck here in this world where our awareness is enveloped in a highly flexible yet finite, um, membrane or brain of this, uh, particular version of us. When this world's physical body disintegrates together with it disinte- together with disintegrates uh, the membrane in enveloping our awareness of this world, the bubble of this unit that I am now uh, I am now bursting uh, never became whole again. In a sense, uh, we die indeed. The small part of us that uh, we are now dies. What does it matter that some version of us continues to live somewhere some uh, somewhere somehow? Are these other versions of me that are not aware of my existence, in me indeed? Am I just a dream in the mind of another version of me? We, our life awareness, uh, pop up and burst away constantly like bubbles in a boiling stew. Can you even swear that we all exist simultaneously in the same universe or we just share uh, moments of intercepting membranes? The moment, uh, The thought of this doesn't make me happy. Uh, the people that I share a verse with for a moment and I happened to love very dearly are gone forever. Uh, their other selves are not who I loved. Well, that, that's rather deep. And thank you, Inbal. Thank you, everyone who, who wrote in. Uh, but I think that that's just a, an equally valid interpretation of what we've been talking about. Maybe she's right. Uh, we... we th- tend to think it's a little, uh, a lot more personal than that and a lot more fluid. Um, one of the, uh, some of the evidence for that certainly are parallel life experiences that many people report where there are connections in various forms between all sorts of versions of people and ourselves and this sort of thing that are related to what we have here. Uh, I think it, much of it depends on the laws of physics. I, th- I think that there are there are worlds in which we are very much aware of other worlds where we're living. I mean, here they fill your pockets full of antipsychotic drugs and call you schizophrenic if you have seen that happen. Uh, but generally, uh, if we are aware of it in our spirituality and in our lives, I think that we we uh, maintain relationships with those loved ones who have passed from here. Uh, because, as I say, as I said in the post, I think we're, we're already with them. Uh, that, that's true with, with my own immediate family uh, of the last generation, even before that. Um, I believe I know ancestors I never even met in, in waking life, if it will, if you will. Uh, and, and that's a, another story, perhaps for another show. But uh, there you have it. So maybe involves right, maybe not. So um, now I can say the thing I wanted to say. Yes, go ahead. I think. I like I like I like the the thoughts I like the I like the idea of it and I like where it's going, but it well actually I don't know if I like where it's going because it's a great example of how postmodernism has failed us, and I will elaborate on that because 
essentially, you know, at its at its barest form, postmodernism is we take the stuff that we've done forever and then we throw it out and we try something new. You know, a great form. You see, you know, a lot of this in art. You know, as as time has gone on, you know, the Baroque Renaissance style is taken out, and you know, more things were coming in, and then you had your your sort of modern art as it as it popped up in the in the fifties, and then you had postmodern, which was like, you know, okay, we're going to take everything we know, we're going to throw it out, and we're going to start from scratch, and that sort of thought, you know, made its way into intellectual circles, it made its way into um, anything scholastic, anything academia, whether it was politics, religion. Or, or you know, philosophy, and it brings us to where we are today—a sad, depressed, anxious mess. Because postmodernism is hitting a wall, and we've been seeing it more and more lately. And that wall is nihilism. Because when you start throwing everything out, and everything's gone, you're you're left with—you're not left with much. You're you're left with okay, well, here's my assumptions of what I think, but what is it based on? Nothing. And so because it's based on nothing, and we try to say it's scientific, whatever that means, because we don't even know what that means anymore. It's changed. Right. The, the, we don't even know what scientific means anymore because when people say science, it doesn't necessarily mean science. They just have data that they interpret, which is not considered knowledge. It's considered opinion. So we're, we're left in this very dysfunctional space of trying to take these very large existential concepts – and apply knowledge that is isn't really from anywhere, right? It's it's from it's from sources that have just thrown out everything else and said, well, this is what it is. And so we try and 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 fit this in. And it's terrifying. It's impersonal. It's it's you know it's it's it, it's what you know you can get existential dread from it because it's like okay, cool. You know, if I if I die here and then I'm not me anymore, I'm nothing. And it's interesting because of how the word nothing is used in the English language because nothing is a noun instead of it not being anything. So it's so we're, we're, that's a different topic for a different day. That's semantics. But essentially what, I, what I'm trying to get to is we're, we're here, we're hitting this wall, and you know we always, we always like to say that you know our ancestors were aware of the multiverse. And I'd say the more I've kind of thought about it, the more I've, I, and I've played with, with that concept, I wouldn't say that they called it the multiverse. They just oh, no. they just didn't see they, they they saw reality as a whole, not as individual pieces. We right. as as wonderful materialistic postmodern people, we like to break things down and we like to break it into its parts and we like to say, All right, so we broke it all up and here we are. You know, there's a really interesting quote from Tolkien because uh, for a long time in, in in literary circles, in the in the story of Beowulf, um, a lot of of time and effort was spent going into the symbolism of the the stew that Grendel's mother makes in it. And there's like long literary essays about the significance of this stew. And Tolkien very aptly put. Okay, the stew does, the stew's great. Yeah, that's all cool and all, but that doesn't matter because what matters is the story. So he he equated it to a tower, and he was like, "All right, so let's say somebody builds a tower, you know, thousands of years ago, and um, you know, they build this tower, they use this tower for such and such a purpose, and then over time the tower crumbles and then it falls into stones, and then those stones are then used to build houses. So archaeologists will come in, they'll break the houses down." And they'll just stare at each individual stone, and they'll stare at it for so long they'll forget what it was even for. And they they just they just see a pile of stones. So what was what was this pile of stones? Was it a tower? Was it a house? At the end of the day, it's about the bigger picture. It's not about the individual stone. It's about what the stone makes up. So here's the thing: we get caught on these tiny little these tiny little snares, and then we just hyper focus on them. And the if if I had any bit of advice for anybody is, you know, sure, you know, what matters down down you know down the line, great, cool. But what matters is that you're you're doing your best at this very moment to to function in in this in this web of relationships in this space with everybody around you, because at the end of the day, that's our our prescript our sort of prescription for dealing with parasites, and I'd say it's this it's the prescription with dealing with everything else. 
because life's hard enough without us having <laughs> having to deal with existential dread f- basically forced on us by you know the the intellectual landscape in which we live which is very bleak it's very very bleak because there's there's no hope you know science doesn't allow for hope it just allows for facts you know it's just like all right well here it is you know inevitable heat death of, of reality cool great and you know maybe there's something afterwards there's some math that says that there's a multiverse but we don't really know much about it and so that leaves us with these these bits and pieces, and you focus on the bits and pieces, and you miss the bigger picture. So that's what well, I wanted to say. We could end the show right there, because that about sums it up. But we have not talked about God yet. No. Uh, and the question is, where is God in all this? Everybody, but we do have uh, a break. We do have a break. You're right. Okay, well, we'll take our break. You're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WON 1240 AM and 99.5 FM in New England's beautiful but really cold Blackstone River Valley, and we'll be right back. The night is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to The Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofnigh.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. Want to take a ride? Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, welcome back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WON AM and FM Radio. And we are talking, uh, we're responding today to all sorts of comments about a, a Facebook post about, uh, will, whether we will see our loved ones again after quote unquote death. Now, uh, during the second half of the show here, we will be happy to take phone calls. Uh, you can call us at 401-762-1240-1240. Uh, uh, seven six. I should, I'm sorry. Seven six six twelve forty. Four zero one seven six six one two four zero. If you have any questions, you can drop a line to Paul at behindtheparanormal.com. So when it comes to God, everybody uh, just again more assumptions. Uh, God, uh, you know, sends you to heaven or hell or whatever, and you have to do these certain things. There is a meme going around which is rather chilling, uh, and I think it needs qualification. Uh, it's the relationship with God that is sold to people, and I might add, by some religious leaders. Uh, but the, the relationship with God sold to people mirrors that of an abusive partner. The same mental tricks are used, quote, you nothing, you're nothing without me, you aren't worthy of my love, you need me to be whole, I can save you, only I know what you need, you must submit and let me control your life. And uh, the meme says it's a scam and an obvious one at that. And it goes on, and hell, that's the biggest classic, look what you made me do, unquote. Okay, again, rather chilling. However, this needs serious qualification. I've seen this in some Western Christian groups, uh, Catholics and Protestants, maybe not so much anymore with some of them, but still very alive. I have never seen it in Eastern Orthodox Christianity. I've never seen it in Judaism and a number of other religions. Uh, so th- th- this is a very narrow view of how God is, quote, sold, unquote, uh, to people. But I think it influences a lot of our views of uh, whether we will see our loved ones again, if that's even the right question to ask or about the view of the quote-unquote afterlife that a lot of people have. We often refer to it as very cartoonish. Uh, there is a view that uh, perhaps the quote-unquote afterlife is um, a sort of a carbon copy or close copy of this one, uh, which if the multiverse ideas that, that we have are, are indeed true, uh, could could actually be. Uh, people say, well, you studied in the seminary and, you know, you don't know anything about this. I said, well, they don't teach this in seminaries. I attended Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox seminaries, and uh, they don't teach about this. The Bible doesn't say much about it either. It refers to uh, the the Jewish uh, idea of Sheol, which is translated in English as hell, 
which is wrong. Uh, Sheol is, is not a place of punishment. It's a place of waiting. Well, it's also a, uh, it's a place and a thing and a creature. It's like three well, different true. things. Well, Ben, why don't you take it from here? Well, Sheol is a, is a fun one. Um, in, in Second Temple, from what I understand anyway, if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. In, in Second Temple Judaism, um, Sheol is, is the, the, the eater of, 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 of the dead. The closest you kind of get to, um, oh, it appears we have a call. If you, if you would take it away, Father. Oh, yes. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm remote today, so it feels funny not being in the studio. Uh, welcome to WOON. Uh, you had a question? Uh, you are speaking with Ben. With, oh, I don't, well, a, a second Ben. How many Bens can sit on the head of a pin? Hello, Ben. What can we, uh, talk uh, about today? Would, would, sure. Would you like to go on the air? Yeah, because uh, I can't. Okay, well, <laughs> I can relay your question if you'd like. All right. Yeah, all right, so we're waiting for, um, I guess Ben doesn't want to come on the air. Uh, the, the other Ben, Ben number two. Uh, but anyway, um, I think um, uh, some of the ideas of, of, of God are just very uh, narrow and bizarre and anthropomorphic as a theological term. Well, we, t- we take God and, and uh, put human characteristics on he, she, it, or them, whatever pronouns even mean. And uh, one, uh, I'll just point out probably our most popular show. It is our most popular show by the numbers. It was show number 821, December 8th, 2019, Will Satan Be Saved? Uh, with theologian Dr. David Bentley Hart. Uh, again, that's available free at BehindTheParanormal.com. It's show number 821 from December 8th, 2019. And uh, it's a bizarre question, but there was a great debate in the early Christian church about that. Uh, that if, if people are damned forever, that is very unsymmetrical and does not match the idea of God as a, uh, as the all-forgiving father. And it's more like the abusive partner as the meme set. And we have uh, many listeners of all sorts of views. We have atheists who live to the show. We have priests and nuns who listen to the show. People of all different beliefs that we have Muslims who listen to the show. And uh, there was a lot. There was a lot of interest in this show and a lot of disagreement about it. Uh, Doctor Hart tends to believe that uh, God is all merciful, and uh, but uh, our, our evangelical listeners and even some relatives of ours uh, will point out that. Uh, well, the, sorry about that. Uh, I uh, was I was relaying. I, I was attempting. Um, this fine, this fine caller uh, asked asked questions. Uh, I'm I'm attempting to to relay them. Um, the the question well, was if uh, you know if in in the Bible um, the you know it, it basically all it all all comes down to Judgment Day. God rules everything and left everything the way it is, and it's kind of up up to our 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 will and how everything works. Um, and if one tries to picture the universe. Uh, is the how can we picture anything beyond it if it's infinite? So I guess we can we can take the first one, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to take that, Ben, uh, I can I can try. Um, first things first. I'm not a theologian, not a priest. Uh, I just do my best with what I got. Um, that is. I'm trying to remember what the what the Donatism well, is. The, that what it is? Well, uh, Donatism has to do with with uh, is. Are the sacraments uh, uh, are they effective if the priest is a jerk? Nope, that's uh, that's 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 that's. I'm I'm getting it confused with the, well, the one not, where basically God is a cosmic watchmaker, and he puts everything together, and he just kind of walked away. Well, that, that, that's pretty much the Western view in many ways. Uh, that uh, the whole thing is a machine, including ourselves, our own bodies, and that God kind of left it, and then science kind of took it from there. I think one of the, the theological points that, that can be drawn from uh, the Bible, certainly, is the notion of synergy. Now, you hear that term cropping up. I can't believe that the theological terms that are cropping up in modern lingo, but synergy is the idea that there is a collegiality, there is a cooperation 
between God and, and humans uh, as, as there was in the covenant of Abraham. I mean, why did God need to uh, make, make a deal with humans uh, to be his people, that sort of thing? You, know, you can get into ancient aliens and all this stuff, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so so the, the notion of synergy is that people have to cooperate, but it's a voluntary cooperation. Deism. And it's called deism. Oh, deism is what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Most of about. the founders of the United States were, were deists. A couple of were, were straight-line Christians, but most of them were deists influenced by Voltaire and, and the, uh, the Enlightenment, so-called. Yes, that's, that's what, I, that's what I, was, I was trying to remember what I it was I don't know called. if that even answers Ben's question. No, her name it was a fine fine lady. Uh, was not not named Ben. Um, <laughs> oh, she okay, asked who I was fine. speaking to and said Ben, and I said, "Oh, it's it's Ben." And uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's that's where that we'll came from. Um, so that is that is essentially deism, um, which it's not it's it's not quite it's like it's like partially right. So it's it's kind of like it kind of comes down to um, what you know what's the point of being a human, right? And what's what's the point of all of it if it do, if if it doesn't really matter? And the the idea is that we we become yeah you know, we do our best to reorient ourselves and not just ourselves but the world around us it toward towards paradise right you know um and and towards order that's that's kind of the whole point but you know yeah sure God does rule over everything but we still have free will and we can choose not to participate in that order hundred percent. You know, I, I choose not to participate in certain things. You know, people choose not to participate in things. That's okay. Yeah, but you don't get sent to hell for it, as the meme said. Right, exactly. You yeah. know, it's, um, you know. It's, I think that's a problem. And God, God is thought to be something like an abusive partner by many people. And that's just wrong, in my opinion. I think one of the really important things to point out is that, um, you know, much a lot of a lot of eastern religions not even just you know eastern christianity or anything like that you know there's there's the element of mystery there in that whatever whatever is said theological doctrine whatever it's it's there to delineate the borders of a mystery not to define it there's there's still a mystery because every every day every moment Every second is a mystery. We can't know what's going to happen in a second. Hey, you know, it's live radio, and anybody who's ever worked in live radio could know that anything could go wrong at any second. But, you know, we we know that there's that you know the only thing that we can do is order ourselves so that we can be prepared for such a thing. You know, we kind of live in chaos. You know, we can't order the world around us, but we can at least do it ourselves. It's um. You know, I'm. I think that another. I, I do. I do kind of like the, the the second question, which was try to picture the universe. Um, you know, there is there really isn't anything beyond it because it's it's you know because it's infinite. And you know, it's it's. Uh, I guess that's true, but also um, it depends on who you talk to. You know, some scientists will say, well, you know, if you're going by light years, then it's 14 billion light years wide. You know, and it's expanding. But here's the thing: we don't know. You know, I think I think something that's that's re- that's really been missing in in our modern world is the phrase "I don't know." I feel like yeah. there, there's a there's this need to constantly know what's happening all the time, but there's no rule anywhere that says you have to know what you're doing or what's going on all the time because you just can't. You can't know it. And sure, yeah, I can't picture infinity. Definitely can't. I can barely picture more than 150 people in a room, knowing at least more than 150 people. You know, it's like uh, trying to picture like a population size of you know a couple million. You know, you can't picture that individual people with all their own lives. It's hard to do. You know, I don't think anybody sure can. But on the other hand, I think that uh, one of the uh, indications in quantum mechanics is that infinity can get bigger than it already is. Uh, I think that's an important concept. I think we, we cannot limit. Our imaginations or our, our uh, open-mindedness, uh, with you know, at the same time taking into consideration as as disciplined as we can be in our thinking, etc. One of the things that comes up, uh, and again, you know, w- w- regarding God, 
and uh, people come after me. Oh, you know, you were in the seminary, but you must have forgotten everything, or you were you were behind the door the day they taught theology or the Bible or something. You know, no, I wasn't. I think that the the, um, the one of the issues is is that if God's creation is the result of infinite love, which is the theology that that's cl- clear, why wouldn't the creation be infinite? And infinite in the sense of all possible outcomes, forming a, a, a beautiful and elegant perfection, uh, i.e. the multiverse and all possible outcomes. Th- that's my personal point of view. So I don't think that uh, any of the, the things we tend to uh, talk about uh, have any problem uh, fitting in with uh, any religion, least of all Christianity. So that's that's my point of view. Uh we have uh, an email here, actually, that just came in. Let me uh, see if I can. Oh, thought we got it. Uh, did you want to take uh, another question from um, the Facebook post, Ben? I can. It- um, so we will go with, um, let's see. The short ones are always really long, so we'll go with a long one because um, we only have about Eh, a little less than 15 minutes left in the show. Um, so this is from David in Seattle, Washington, uh, and he writes, I'm leaning towards uh, Donald Hoffman's theory that physical reality doesn't exist at all, except at a certain level of description, quote-unquote. It emerges from quantum information. Our mind constructs it so that we can uh, perceive and interact with a reality that is information-based. Conscious agents, which are, are very much alive, may be the fundamental building blocks of reality, uh, and its interactions of conscious agents that creates the information we perceive as the physical universe. On the level of description in which physical reality does exist, physicists, uh, our physicist uh, David Deutsch has uh, things about right. It's a multiverse, and other times are just special cases of, uni- of other universes. Our minds arrange, quote-unquote, snapshots, of space-time into linear time sequences. From Einstein's space-time perspective, everything is happening, quote-unquote, now, in some important sense, and time is just a stubbornly persistent illusion. Okay, well, I mean, that that's uh, perfectly possible as well. Um, David Deutsch is um, a British um, inventor who has uh, come up with quantum computers, things of this kind. He's actually using the idea of multiple worlds uh, to uh, get work done so but but again <clears throat> i mean what 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 does it mean uh there are interpretations of the multiverse like ours we've had eminent physicists on the show agreeing with us we've had others who do not agree with us so who really knows and we we are not scientists and my background is philosophy and theology and ben and we're, we're both students of theology and, and uh, theology researchers i like to call ourselves but in the meantime, um, Ben, uh, what, what further uh, comment can you make on that? Uh, I'm trying to to come up with something that's a, that's at least well thought out. Um, yeah. Because I, I think I think the problem is um, I don't know. I think it, I think it's going a bit too far and saying, well, you know, we're all just then then if it's all if it's all information based, then it's like. Then where's all the information coming from? Is my question. Well, I, I would uh, request that the listener uh, listen to our show with Tom Campbell, uh, which is coming up. I don't have it in front of me, but in, within the next few weeks, uh, Tom has dealt with this very issue in physics of uh, creation or reality being information based, and he gets into the holographic theory in a way that I've never heard before. Very interesting stuff, and we'll look forward to that. So, I think you know, just if if any way to sum this up, and Ben, and Ben, you'll you'll want to uh, take it from from this, uh, take it from here to maybe close us up uh, for the uh, show would be that we get back to Tom Dongo and and his his uh, conclusion that that it, humility and simplicity are best. We don't really know. Anybody who thinks they really know what's going on with an afterlife or loved ones, et cetera, whatever, in that context, or even God, is an arrogant fool. Okay, and that includes us if and when we we stray into that sort of, um, you know, self-assured kind of arrogance. 
Uh, and I think that it's, it's, the matter is, is just to be simple. I think Ben, you, you summed it up very well earlier in the show. You, uh, <clears throat> and I, I would put it, you, you get up every day with a grateful heart. You go through your day. You love your loved ones. You love God. You do, you, you fulfill your daily responsibilities. And, uh, <clears throat> if our idea is correct, then you're making a good bed in the multiverse. If not, then what, what's the harm? I mean, it's always good to live a responsible and uh, thoughtful and spiritual life, loving God and loving your family, etc., and fulfilling your daily responsibilities. When uh, whatever it is comes for me, that's how I want to be found. So I think that, that that's the only conclusion we can draw from any of this. Ben, what say you? Um, I say... Yeah, I'd I'd agree. I think I think it's important to 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 make a make a quick a quick distinction. Um, I guess you know it, it, I guess it kind of is like um, sorry, I'm stumbling with my words. I'm trying to I'm trying to get my well, get this my, is difficult. Well, yeah, I'm trying to get my thoughts together. I like I like to kind of be be sort of sort of ready when it when it comes to comes to something. So I, I guess it's um, you know it's it comes down to how we perceive the the world around us, and it's it's important to point out that I don't think reality is subjective in that it's it's like okay well you know um, this table's made of pizza because I perceive that it's made of pizza. Or, or whatever, you know, we're all t- subjects to an objective reality that we're all observing and participating in. And I think deepest at our core, we want to participate in something. We want to participate in some story. We want to be part of something, right? Whether it's, it's understanding our, our place in, in, you know, I guess reality. Or, or maybe the multiverse, whatever, whatever labels you want to put on it, we're all participating in something. And no one of us is, is a main character. And anybody who thinks they are is, is very arrogant in that because we all have a part to play. You know, whether it's, it's somebody in somebody's lives, whether it's in our own lives or, or something else, we're, we're all here to participate in a bigger story. And, I think, you know, whether we all know it or not, we're all participating in it in some way, shape, or form. You know, it's why people join fan clubs. It's why, you know, you, you we watch movies because there's stories that we're participating in and we identify with the characters. And these are all things that we're participating in. And it's the same sort of thing with the multiverse or the paranormal. We love these stories about ghosts and monsters and stuff because we're participating in them. You know, and when it actually happens to us, it's like, holy crap, we're participating in a ghost story. <laughs> and, and that's why it's so interesting. And it's why you, Dad, were brought to my elementary school and told to give talks on ghosts because we're all participating in a story. And, you know, it's why we well, like... Well, and then everybody gets scared. They don't let me come anymore. Exactly. Well... It's a good shepherd school in Woodsocket. <laughs> yes. And now, uh, you know, we're all, we're, all, we're all still participating in a story, but it's our story together not singular i think it's important to make that that distinction you know whether you know whether reality is made entirely of information you know whether you know we're just (laughs) brains floating around in in a in a vat i think the the important thing to note is whatever is happening is still happening you know and it's it's not going away you know whether it's people having experiences with ufos ghosts bigfoot you know cryptids whatever it's all still it's all still happening Right, and it's I think the fact that we acknowledge that these are things that are are in our reality, these are a part of our story, the easier it is to accept rather than focusing on individual parts and trying to find mechanisms and put it all together and build a watch or whatever the heck we're building, the point is not the individual parts, it's the whole thing, and the whole thing that we're participating yeah. in yeah I, I I certainly would agree with that uh. One of the things, too, to, before we get to our announcements, is that uh, many people wrote in with their um, own experiences that they believe uh, were either 
of the quote unquote other side. I mean, we would say, well, which other side? We, you know, but, but, uh, a world other than the one we, we're conscious of right now, uh, either seeing their loved ones or not seeing their loved ones, as, as Cliff pointed out. But, um, again, the, uh, we, we really, uh, cannot question other people's experiences. They are what they are. And, uh, they, you know, we respect, uh, all those who, uh, have experiences of that kind who, who are sincere about it. So, um, that, again, they are what they are. So, okay, well, we are a few minutes from the end of the show, so let's get to our announcements. Indeed. Uh, if you have further interest in the subject of today's show, I guess who doesn't, uh, be sure to catch our February 20th show, Cheating the Ferryman, with the great British author and consciousness researcher, Anthony Peake. He'll be with us. And uh, for those who are not familiar with, with their their uh, mythology, uh, the ferryman was the, was the one who, would, when you die, would f- ferry you across the river Styx into the afterlife. So that's cheating the ferryman was when you cheat death. So that's what that means. And uh, we uh, we're informed by the organizers of the Supernatural Bowl debate on February fourth at the Pine Bush UFO and uh, Paranormal Museum in Pine Bush, New York. They haven't been able to find any scientists or professors who are willing to debate us and our colleague uh, Linda Zimmerman, so the event night might not take place. Yeah, stay tuned on that. They're probably afraid of us, right, of our towering intellect, right, Ben? Yeah, right, huh? Um, but we do look forward uh, and to the New England Parafest uh, in Kittery, Maine, uh, which runs from April 10th to the 26th, and uh, we'll provide more information as the dates approach. And uh, visit our show website, BehindTheParanormal.com, where you can find well over, it's more like 1,100 hours at this point of Jeez. our regular shows and special broadcasts from 2008 uh, from CBS Radio, Achieve Radio, and here on WONAM and FM, including, uh, those, uh, and, uh, including uh, many that have been restored to the archives. Again, BehindTheParanormal.com and uh, the shows that we referred to previously, uh, if you, you could do a search through there, Find uh, shows uh, with Anthony Peake, uh, which, which was with Kowski, as we mentioned, and uh, just about anybody else you might be interested in on all subjects from uh, the paranormal realm, uh, theology, philosophy, all sorts of things that we deal with. And you can hear many of these broadcasts, too, on the major podcast platforms, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And in addition, our show now has its own app. It's uh, simple but free. Uh, that you can download that at BehindTheParanormal.com. And right on the main page, there's a link. Now, so check out our books, along with those of our guest co-hosts, and it's a lot of our books we deal with the subjects that we talked about today. Uh, <clears throat> you can get them at uh, BehindTheParanormal.com in the online bookstore. Uh, you can get them at Amazon.com, and uh, some of them are, are in regular bookstores, too. Uh, you can find out more at BehindTheParanormal.com, too, about our cases over the years, public appearances, and how to book us. And uh, our website has a charity page with links of several good causes we've adopted over the years, including Hope for Hilldale Cemetery in Haverhill, Massachusetts, uh, USA Cares, Canadian Veterans Advocacy, Helping Haiti's Orphans, uh, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, the Sisterhood of Ground Zero, and most recently, the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. And we emphasize that we are very, very careful about the charities that we endorse on this show. Mm. Uh, we know the people personally who run them, and we make sure that they go to uh, the right, uh, any donations go to the right use and not, not to buying them uh, Lexus uh, cars and things of that kind. So, yes. uh, so we're very careful about that. So yeah, we believe you can really trust these charities. So what's on the barbecue for next week, Beth? So we have heating up on the grill um, on January 23rd. Jeez, we're plowing right through January. Uh, UFO researchers and data analysts Cheryl and Linda Costa join us to discuss UFOs, the actual data. And that should be a real barn burner of a show. Yeah, it should. And uh, that was uh, delayed for several months because they were moving, apparently, and there there were uh, some problems with that. But they're all set now, and the Costas will be with us then. Indeed. So uh, we'll leave you today with a quote from Sir Edmund Burke, the great Irish parliamentarian, who usually commented on politics and government. Quote, if you fear something, learn as much as you can about it. Knowledge conquers fear, unquote. And that, that's how we're going to end 
with simplicity and humility, and I think that's all we can say. Yes. I'm Paul Eno. And I'm Ben Eno. And thanks for joining us on our great cosmic journey, and we shall see you next time on Behind the Paranormal. Return to this radio frequency 167 hours from now for another edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno.